Hey everybody and welcome to Parkitect. Uh, this is our uh, continuation of the campaign mode. Uh, we are on uh, number four and today's choice is Victoria Lake uh, before we move on to Coral Island uh, next week or Coral Caldera I guess. So the objective for this one is 300 guests in our park and no loan debts um, and the optional goals in the meantime are 100 guests and 200 guests so kind of stair-stepping our way up and then uh, completing them by September year two. So the challenge here is definitely going to be in the no loan debts uh, matter, but uh, we'll see what we can do to make it work. So kind of looking around, seeing what we've got. It's a pretty big space. Kind of reminds me of Leafy Lake from RCT2 or RCT1 actually. So first thing I did was actually chop off the um, walkways on both sides and um, that way we can keep the guests where we want them at least to start. So I had already made this coaster, uh, this junior coaster, which we'll come back and place here in a minute. Uh, it's a, a Vacoma uh, Junior 207 meter uh, model. Uh, the nice thing with Parkitect's um, coaster builder is that we have some options for uh, things that we can't do in RCT2. So that was uh, that was one of them. I've been enjoying recreating some smaller coasters and things like that. So. Um, we'll drop that in. In the meantime, I was just kind of looking around at different rides and seeing what we can use to maximize our lakefront since that's really what we want to focus on here. The whole idea of this park and the, the name kind of Victoria Lake felt a little regal to me so I thought why not try and at least make things a little fancier so um, we're, we're going for sort of a Tudor half timber type style architecture once we get to that. Um, and we'll, we'll look to develop a little bit of a main street and then um, carry it around the map. And we won't necessarily hold on to it the whole way around, but we'll, um, we'll carry it for a number of, of spaces. So here's the junior coaster. Finally plop that in in a way that fit. Um, pulling our queue through the space. Um, you'll notice that uh, turn that kind of crosses up above the station actually makes, us, makes it a little bit difficult to uh, get an actual station in there. Um, so we're, we're going to have some clever uh, times when we get to that. Um, I also figured we should drop this top scan, um, which great ride in real life, one of my favorite flat rides. Uh, also, it seems like a money maker since this game really, really pushes towards coasters and thrill rides. Um, in some cases, even more thrill rides than anything else. And since we just dropped a junior coaster, I figured uh, this sort of more intense uh, flat ride would start. Um, so by way of the chat poll, uh, yellow and blue went out for the coaster, so we changed that one up and went with, uh, went with that. Doing some yellow flowers and just little details here throughout. And this is sort of our base set of rides. Uh, we're we're going to drop in a, um, a boat ride, um, not a boat ride, a pedal, uh, the Jeez, I can't even think of the name right now. The uh, the the pedal um, swan boats here, uh, so those will happen here in a little bit. But first, we're going to develop out this main street just a little bit. So starting with the brick, going a little darker than the standard color. Um, looking at awnings, all look a little more modern than I'd kind of like. So we'll trade that out in just a little bit, and then uh, roof selection, kind of seeing what we can work with. We are still playing with vanilla. Um, I will intend to get into doing some modding uh, work or work with mods, I guess, at some point. Uh, but for now, we're going to start out here and see how it goes, and then we'll, we'll come back and try some try some other stuff here in a little bit. But we're uh, we're starting here in the corner. I want to develop out this uh, little restaurant space. So, a little tower on top, a uh, couple stories, brick on the bottom, and then this uh, kind of white upper section, which we're going to try and use the uh, uh, the um, kind of border pieces here give us some decoration on the actual structure a little bit. So placing that at sort of regular intervals here. And some flexibility with this, especially with the pillars that you don't have to build on the grid necessarily. So there's, there's some opportunity there. Looking at the different awning colors, trying to figure out which is the best color, so put it up to chat poll, and for this one, uh, the green ended up winning out for at least the initial go of things. 
but there were some other colors to win out a little bit later. Uh, filling out the inside of the space just a little bit here and then uh, kind of continuing to expand this building. We're going to do three total buildings on this side in the, in the Disney style of um, all of them connected together. But this one is by far the biggest in the section here. And all of this is also kind of screening that um, warehouse building in the back there that all of our materials are going to come from. Um, actually, we need, we'll find out later that we need to screen it from the front as well, but um, this is a good way to try and establish a little bit of our uh, sight lines, which this game is kind of good with in that you really need to um, make sure you're paying attention to sight lines or else they will punish you from a guest enjoyment standpoint. Uh, which I really do enjoy. I think it's fun. In, in some cases it may be a little bit extreme, but um, I, I think it's it's better better in this way than not. So um, that's definitely one of the most appealing features for me of Parkitect so far. It makes the scenario play a little bit more fun because it does put the emphasis on doing something from a thematic standpoint just to give that little extra bit of look. Alright, so we're filling out both sides here and kind of continuing this theme of the brick and the, the white above, uh, adding these trim pieces all over. So took, taking a little bit extra time and, and keeping an eye on the money as well, just to make sure that we don't you know, totally spend all of our money ahead of time, because uh, we really don't want to um, get into a situation where we uh, have lost um, the ability to do anything if we're not profitable on the park. Um, and, and the debate here is whether we want to take out loans or not um, and try and pay them back before the year two or just build out enough and then keep eking by making the money off of the uh, admissions and ride revenue in order to get us to a finished point. But uh, So that's the, the conundrum at least once we get going. But uh, in the meantime we still have nearly eight grand to spend on uh, architecture and the nice thing about this game is that architecture is not crazy, crazy expensive, so it, it helps kind of on the overall uh, as far as that goes. So we can see our third, our second and third buildings here coming together, so we're kind of changing roof directions just to give it a little bit more um, variety and um, changing up kind of the different materials and the colors, uh, just enough to give us a little bit of variety. So we're using this, uh, uh, the pillar pieces once again, and I thought I'd bring in the uh, the stair step as well, which uh, is a little bit unique as far as that goes, because I hadn't really used those pieces before. Very, very Dutch, I suppose, uh, as compared to um, Tudor. But uh, still, nonetheless, I think it looks pretty nice. A taller building for sure, but again, screening that uh, front side still is, is kind of where I'm interested in. The uh, general scenery selection in Vanilla is, is okay. Um, I will say probably one of my biggest complaints would be the lack of window options. Uh, while there are some, there's not a lot, and uh, this little square window ends up becoming sort of the, the de facto everything window. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out what the, what the best option is going to be for some of these things. So uh, after a little bit of time trying to work through this one, place a couple windows across and then uh, even more and then we'll, we'll take some of these out a little bit later because it's not quite the best fit uh, to trying to figure out what might and might not work um, but in the end it's at least a semi-detailed facade even if it is sort of uh, a bit messy so we uh, never really start with enough um, units to really fill out these buildings but it's enough that we've got the restroom building on the one in the middle there we've got the food stall on the far end and then this guy's an umbrella stall so um, sort of a merchandise shop building more than anything else um, using that stair step again here different kind of brick pieces and then also using the uh, chimney pieces here just as some accent details on the side um, one of the things to really try and remember through the whole thing is to uh, get your maintenance areas through the back, so bringing in all of those uh, walkways uh, in through the back of the space, which can sometimes be a bit of a pain if you don't think it through the whole way, um, just in that really any um, any shop needs essentially three tiles deep. You need a pathway, you need the shop, 
and then you need the maintenance area behind it. So it can get kind of uh, cumbersome if you're trying to do just a small little little space. Um, but it's uh, another game mechanic that I do think is more interesting than not. So um, I'm, I'm happy it's there. Just trying to add a couple more details. We were looking at these uh, brick corner pieces, which uh, I think work kind of nice, but not necessarily on a uh, wall where we already have brick. Um, so we're going to pass on that until a little bit later on as we go through. So looking at our different planter boxes too, um, this is maybe another gripe, but the uh, the stair-stepping uh, nature of the vertical spacing where you can put objects, and obviously modding will on some extent clear this out, but um, some of the stair-step, uh, or the, the, the step for how far up something goes at each level uh, is a little large, so those planter boxes, I actually like them to be slightly lower on the window itself, um, but unfortunately they really can't be because they're either too low or a little too high. So those purple flowers there are taking up a little bit more of that window than I would like them to be. But um, we'll uh, work with what we've got so far. Uh, so there we've got some nice um, vines on there and we're going to spruce up these little center planters. Uh, looking at some of these trees from the Booms and Blooms pack. Now I was kind of intending to go vanilla, vanilla game like original Parkitect through this scenarios, but uh, I did at the last Steam sale buy both of the expansion packs, so um, too good of material not to use, so I do love these trees and just the landscape in general. Uh, really nice kind of overall, so the idea is um, I will use those pieces, but um, I'm not going to use any kind of modded stuff at this point for the scenario play, or the campaign play, I guess it is. So here's our paddle boats, which we're working on right here, trying to make a, a nice little um, kind of overlook space that's got some seating, as well as kind of an overlook uh, walkway as well. Just making the most of our uh, kind of front space here. So we can see as we build along, I've got this little brick retaining wall uh, throughout the whole space and trying to alternate some pathways just to keep it more interesting. And we will kind of color that uh, cobblestone path in two different colors and kind of carry it along here at some point. Um, I did look at putting tables down uh, at these these uh, seats just to make it kind of look like a dining space. Um, I couldn't quite figure out a good way to make that work, so I decided to leave it for now. But um, I am going to maximize the seating in the area. Trying to see if there's a tree that fits. Um, I really do like this weeping willow tree, but it's a little too big uh, and it won't quite fit. The oak tree fits at a larger size, but it ends up blocking pretty much everything around it, so um, not quite the best choice. So we'll settle on a couple of these other ones and ends up just being a larger version of the the tree that we already uh, have planted throughout the, the birch. So I do like those hedges, um, the very square kind of multi-layer hedges. It's a little cartoony, but honestly, I think in general, the park tech scenery is on the cartoony side, um, which is, is okay. They're sort of in, in big blocks rather than kind of the finer details of the real small, tiny pieces like RCT might have, um, especially from a custom uh, content standpoint. Now, granted, custom content here on park tech we'll probably head that direction too. But as far as base game goes, you got very large pieces to work with, which actually makes it kind of easier, uh, in my opinion, to do decent architecture. Uh, we replaced that last planter with an info booth and then themed it up just a little bit, uh, just to try and give it uh, a look that matches similar to what else is around. So another crossing roof and a little cupola on top. And now we're just kind of looking at the last couple of details before we decide to actually open the park up to our, our general guests. Um, so we still have a little bit of money to spend. We spent about half since the last check-in. And uh, we spent a lot on Main Street here, but we can see from doing the um, uh, lens for decoration that we're still seeing a lot of issues here with the, uh, the kind of unsightly back-of-house area really causing... Uh, some issues on the path so we gotta go a lot thicker here with the trees and I'll also put up a fence and a gate and everything like that so that'll solve that issue for us uh, but now we really need to focus on the rest of the park since we'd spent all of our time there on the front 
Um, so going over to the coaster station here, we're going to look at a uh, glass option, sort of glass and lattice work. Um, I'm trying to go with a 2x4 in this instance because that piece of track right there cuts into the overall space. Um, not ideal uh, by any means, and we're going to have to deal with that at some point, but um, the, the frustrating part, I guess, is that the um, standard in-game coaster station has steps that run all the way down the whole thing and extend onto the tile next to it, so you can't really just leave it off. You've got to do something with it, uh, which means that we are uh, kind of forced to put something there, and it's either going to be uncovered or it's going to have a really low cover, so there's not a whole lot you can do. You're kind of forced to uh, make a decision that may not quite be the, the one you want to do. We're using our arch pieces here and we're using the other border pieces. Uh, again, like I said, sort of cartoony as in those border pieces are super thick. Um, there's really not a whole lot of nuance to those, which is not necessarily a problem, but uh, sometimes when you want just a little bit thinner trim, you, you don't really have it. So we're going to try and make uh, the best of what we've got. So looking at a little bit of theming right now, and uh, I thought a tree would be really cool in the middle of this uh, final helix there, so it ends up being another birch tree. Uh, put some uh, landscaping around it just to help it out. And then the last thing I'm going to do as far as you know, getting this coaster ready is come through here and drop in a number of columns. Uh, so the way that this track generated, and I, I don't know what the particular algorithm here for where a support calculates and not, it uh, left our entire helix pretty much non-supported, so I'm going to go back through and put these guys in. It makes no bearing on the actual ride. It'll run regardless of that, but from an overall look standpoint, I just think it looks a lot better to have that uh, overall space there. Alright, so we're back to our station now, just trying to figure out what we want to do, looking at some options here, none of them good. Uh, to fit into that space. So what we're going to do is just leave that and uh, gonna leave it alone and then we'll cover uh, this section here, uh, just that first two tiles worth of Q space with glass. And then put some uh, trellis pieces in and uh, try and bring that architecture from the station out to the entry place. Um, so there's at least a little bit of an iconic entry uh, into the ride. So a little bit of covering here, trying to figure out how to make that uh, kind of sufficiently matching of uh, what the station has. Um, not super successful in that. Uh, this one was sort of all over the place. I, I haven't quite figured out the best way to make uh, glass look good yet. So um, this was a practice more than anything, just trying to use various materials and see what could work. But not necessarily my favorite thing, but we're, we're getting there. As we continue, we'll just drop more benches in, more lights, and everything like that. I haven't focused a whole ton on night lighting for the game. The, this game does a spectacular job at uh, lighting and everything like that, but I really decided that it was best to just kind of avoid that for now. Um, or at least not avoid it, but not focus wholly on it. So I do still put lights and lamps in different places, but I haven't really put a big focus on making that something special. Maybe a little later on, especially when I start my own park, uh, that could be a good option uh, for that. We're remembering to price up all of our stuff just based on uh, where we were before. Uh, we know that the original pricing is a little bit, uh, well, a lot bit uh, too low compared to what the general guest will take or will pay, so we're going to price it up and do a little more with it. So we've opened the park now, and seeing how things perform as we recolor some stuff, you can see we're adding a little bit of texture there by adding a second color to the cobblestone pathway. Haven't done a whole lot of theming on some of these, especially Q theming or anything like that. Um, so the only rain protected ride right now is the uh, carousel, but that's, that's okay. We can get there uh, in a little bit. We'll hope that we don't run into any, um, any major issues with rain. So as we keep getting guests in here, we're uh, over 100 guests, that was our first optional goal, and then the next one is 200. Uh, trying to figure out what's going to be next, and we're making some okay money, uh, but we want to do something at least. So looking at a couple of different options, I think the swinging ship seems to make sense based on the lake and uh, always water, 
uh, wanting to pay kind of some attention to that. So um, trying to decide what we want to do and uh, kind of the general consensus is that a swinging ship may be the best option. So trying to figure out where is best to place this, whether it's up at the front or, or not. So uh, looking at a few different options, but uh, first we thought it would widen out our uh, pathway over to the lake because eventually we'll make this a 360 uh, pathway all the way around but we eventually we settled right here sort of at the far uh, back corner of the lake uh, stuck way out into the lake actually uh, oriented a little differently than I kind of expected to initially um, but I kind of like the way that it sits here and juts out almost like its own pier uh, so you'll swing all the way out over the water uh, that's a good location and good spot to uh, position the ride. It's also pretty visible from the front as well, uh, sitting in profile like that, so as the guests are walking in they're going to get a good look at it right as it comes by. So simple detailing, not a whole lot, doing some uh, landscape and simple stuff like that uh, just to get that ride looking good. Uh, changing out these stairs to the wood ones and then putting some uh, pathway under or the uh, roof piece underneath of it to uh, do that little trick so we uh, make those stairs look a little bit better. I forget who told me that trick from the very first uh, stream that we did but much appreciated because it turned out looking quite nice. Uh, lighting our path a little further as we continue along and uh, letting that swinging ship kind of do its thing. Uh, the rain didn't hold off as we hoped it might but uh, there's enough folks buying umbrellas and doing the carousel that it makes it worthwhile. So now we need to decide where we want to be. Uh, so we're at 190, nearly 200 people, so uh, it won't be too long before we get to 200, which actually unlocks quite a bit of extra land uh, if we want to use that. Uh, but I don't really think we, we need to. So you can see all the land there on the side, uh, real briefly there, that just doesn't, doesn't become a, necess a necessity. Uh, but uh, what is probably a necessity is to have the uh, staff building there. So we are going to take a loan, uh, looking at a couple of different loan options, and drop a staff building back there, because I realized I didn't have one. And then saying we need some kind of another coaster or other ride elements. Uh, we keep boosting the price of the uh, top scan, only because there's just so much... Um, uh, guest demand for that ride that we can really charge an obscene amount for it and you know, the guests will still ride it. We're even going to extend the queue uh, a little later on because the guests will still take it. So at this point before we get into a coaster we'll drop this treatment type ride in the side here and I'm going to go through and put some uh, covering over top of it. And I wanted to do the covering just so that I have a second rain protected ride and one that, that counts as a throw ride. It's not necessarily up at the level of the top spin or top scan, but at least we can have something. Uh, we do later see, and uh, you'll probably notice when this is running, that it uh, clips through this roof. I thought I was clear enough by making it nice and tall and then using those hanger supports for the uh, detailing. Uh, I thought I would be okay, but it uh, turns out I was not. So uh, it does clip through and doesn't quite fit like we wanted to. Uh, so we'll take down that canopy a little bit later and move it to a different ride, but for now this fulfills the need and uh, works just fine for us. So now we get into the coaster and trying to figure out what exactly we want to do for this coaster. I didn't really want to do another wooden one just because we've done so many already in this uh, series, but um, it, it really ended up being the best option, so uh, trying to think about what kind of a ride to do. An out and back makes sense just because we've got a lot of space to work with. Um, and somebody in chat mentioned uh, Hurler at Carowinds or formerly at King's Dominion. And we're eventually going to kind of look at that as an option. Uh, first kind of thought here was something that had some hills out more traditional as it goes along. But now we're going to look at this as what can we do with a uh, Hurler type layout, which if you're familiar with the ride, it's got a uh, lift turn drop just like we have here and then it goes into this high bank corner uh, right by the station um, really high speed not necessarily the most pleasant from the old school um, uh, type of coaster there especially if the park hadn't necessarily maintained it as well as they should have um, it was uh, a little bit brutal at times 
Uh, but it's a cool layout, unique anyway, and something that I kind of enjoy. So playing with a couple of different options, trying to see if we can't get this diagonal bit to go um, over across to that other side of the lake. Uh, we're just bounded by the park boundary just a little bit. So in the end, we said, well, why don't we flip it and go the other way? Because uh, we have plenty of forest space that we can work from. So that's what we're going to do is kind of wrap around here. Uh, I'm doing a rising corner rather than the dive than the kind of flat corner like the real hurlers got. Uh, but that's okay. We'll do something a little bit different. And now we're going to set into more of that traditional out and back layout. So uh, lift or the hill and turn and then a little speed hill. And then we'll do this kind of fast turnaround here as it drops down. Sort of low sweeping corner and then we're going to come back on ourselves. Uh, and then just parallel all the way home and into a diagonal break run, which is a very refreshing change to be able to do that compared to RCT. Um, so, and also being able to do it on an incline if we wanted to. So we've got two trains and we'll get our station and queue set up here. Station pretty easy. Queue set up, or exit set up as well. And then we're going to go about expanding and uh, really making this uh, back area a little viable. So wanting to do those two wide paths throughout the space just to give us a little more room and also make it look a little more realistic. Uh, so widening out everything. Create a nice plaza in front of our uh, coaster, which is a necessity. And then go through and add another supporting ride here, get the spiral slide, um, which um, not necessarily the choice I would make if I really needed it from a, a money-making standpoint, because they just don't make money. Uh, they're such low capacity rides. But that said, it is a good option for uh, another attraction to kind of bound this area and uh, just another gentle attraction based on what we have researched so far. That's that's probably our okay uh, way to go. So we're gonna use the standing sea metal roof uh, from the hangar uh, set, which I do appreciate. It's uh, a nice option, same with the wall pieces there. A little bit odd that they don't exist in the roof tab, uh, but for whatever reason, it is here and uh, we'll make some use of it. And it reminds me of the 1K uh, metal roofs that are so popular in RCT. Uh, so we're going to make use of it. And I put a lot of trim on here. Again, that big kind of chunky trim like we had mentioned before, like I mentioned earlier in the stream or in the video here, um, makes it a little bit larger than I think we necessarily want. But uh, that's, that's okay. Um, while we let the guests in, we're going to do a little bit more theming here and uh, add some more hedges, add that arch, and then start to pay back that loan. So that's the biggest thing right now and kind of why we stopped beyond doing just a little bit of work here. So dropping this um, bathroom building in and kind of setting it up like it could be a, a photo building. So for the exit, so you'd walk through that space on the side there and buy your photo. Uh, obviously that's not an option in uh, Park Protect, but uh, the idea is, is similar. So now it becomes a lot of checking and rechecking of the loan menu because we want to pay our loan back. We've got enough people. Uh, we've passed our goal of the 300. And now it's just a matter of paying our loan back by the end of year two. So we're partway through July of year one and uh, we're doing just fine as far as uh, money making goes. All these rides that we're charging stupid amounts of money for, we're able to make happen. So we can do a little bit of theming and trying not to do a whole heck of a lot because we don't want to spend our money if we can avoid it, or at least not initially. The uh, best course of action here is really just to uh, pay your loan back and leave it at that. But of course I have a hard time sitting still and uh, continuing without. So uh, I'm going to spend all of my money trying to make this uh, nice long utility uh, uh, connection over to our uh, trash chute on this side so we can keep this area clean. Uh, unfortunately, it's um, expensive, and also I still can't get the hang of placing this with the uh, with the builder tool, and I was making a lot of mistakes at the time. So we're going to leave that half completed and come back to it. Just looking at our top scan and how popular it is all the time, I decided I'd chop it off and add in even more Q, because the guests don't seem to mind waiting that long. We'll extend that trellis and cover it up a little bit. 
but not a whole lot to do with the the space to begin with and here I'm kind of realizing just how poor that uh, spiral slide is for um, for usage and now we get a little bit more money here so we can figure out how to connect this up and you can see my struggles here just trying to figure out how to connect it across uh, it's not the most user intuitive system and uh, I am not the most intuitive user for sure uh, so it actually sticks up right there and is somewhat of an eyesore um, but that's just how it goes. So we actually sped up the game now and uh, we're playing at uh, 2 and 3 speed in a couple of instances uh, once we stop doing actual building here just to uh, make that money so we can drop our loan and, and close up the scenario and at least win it. Once we win it then we can go back and at least build it out. Uh, now I'm not necessarily going through like the uh, first scenario where we actually build out the whole darn thing but uh, I am going through and uh, at least trying to make it a complete park so it doesn't look like it's a kind of big open space but uh, adding little details here and there some you know, awnings and coverings and those sorts of things uh, it doesn't really hurt our overall bottom line and it gives you something to do uh, for the whole space lots of little fountains and other things like that and you can see you know every once in a while pull up the loan and pay back a thousand bucks at a time I think it was a twelve thousand dollar loan so not too too hard i was making more than a thousand dollars a month so less than a year payback made plenty of sense as far as kind of we were going thought maybe the water tower could be a decent option here with the fountain underneath of it exactly the same thing that i did during the western scenario but uh who's counting we can we can reuse ideas uh the the fountain with the four uh corner um little potted plants has become sort of a standard deal in all of my scenarios lately it feels like I keep calling them scenarios I know that they're campaigns in Park Effect but I guess I'm so used to the RCT2 uh, nomenclature that I'll keep calling it a, a scenario despite the fact that that's not what it is I added another support here just because it was missing uh, with putting some of the pathways where we put them just to keep it at least visually looking correct. And I thought this spot might be a nice space for a, a little dock. And just in general kind of a good place to sit and look. Uh, going in between those two uh, weeping willows uh, was felt very sort of peaceful I suppose. And uh, adding a few more pieces there which actually we're going to bring back a little bit later um, just to give it some more uh, viewing space. So checking profitability on all the rides and thankfully every single ride is profitable even the spiral slides so that's nice and there we go we won the scenario with 300 guests and paying back all of our loans uh, by july of year two so half a year to spare which is not a bad thing so now becomes a uh, free-for-all so we can spend our money without uh, hesitation and the first thing that we're going to do is uh, complete our main street initially we had planned to do both sides and uh, money wise we said well let's hold off and see what happens and then after this we can come back and build so what we're going to do here is go through and uh, build the overall space and do a couple of more structures uh, i did start researching the shops and stalls uh, which is something i've started doing here towards the end of most of these campaigns uh, just to give me something to fill in a lot of these spaces for um, also we're finally making use of our brick uh, detailing on the corners there so that's a nice little touch copying and pasting similar materials and similar colors across from various other locations because um, we want to mix it up a little bit as far as wall textures and roof textures go but we don't want it to be so um, such a variety that we run into issues where nothing fits or melds together so that's what we're going to do here we're going to use that little kind of diamond window for um, a detail as well now these buildings on the whole over here are a little less detailed than the ones in the front uh, at this point i'm not spending a whole ton of detail on these uh, which is okay i don't think there needs to be uh, but we are trying to uh, just kind of get done at this point so uh, that's why i'm doing um, a pretty quick job of things on this side 
Uh, we did go with the parapet wall uh, here, so we got the parapet roof, I guess. So you've got the whole uh, steep roof and then the flat roof behind it, so typical theme park trick of having the building on the front look way bigger, taller than it actually is. And just some more detailing as we build through the rain, uh, giving our guests in line a little bit of cover, but then I thought, well, it would be nice to be able to see them, so we're going to add in the glass cover in here. And then, of course, the nice big chunky uh, border pieces. These dormers are a nice touch. Uh, it would be nice if there was a little bit of variety, but again, this is uh, the vanilla options that we've got, so we're going to stick with them. I'm using some more awning pieces and uh, dropping in those lanterns as well, and just about calling it a day on these spaces. So not too too much as far as detailing goes, but enough to give it a little bit of um, a little bit of something. And tossing in a few of these shops and stalls give us something to work from. And I actually wanted to make sure that we're connected there, so the employees don't have to walk all the way around this set of buildings to then get over to that set of buildings, just to make sure that that all fits. So being careful to connect all of those bits and pieces. So we moved to this side, and I wanted to do something utilizing either the diagonals or the uh, kind of cut corner um, structure. So I thought a little pavilion type thing here that could become a gift shop perhaps might be a decent idea. So we're going to see a couple iterations of this as it comes along, uh, kind of ending on uh, something where it's got uh, this sort of shaped structure where we have a square, but uh, our corners are cut with glass all the way around so definitely sort of a pavilion feel and the uh, solid walls on the back. I remember earlier I said you needed three spaces to put a uh, shop of uh, service from uh, behind. Well I didn't leave my my space for that so you can kind of see the door on the back side of the building we're gonna have to end up using um, to bring in the employees a little later which is not ideal and not quite the way I want to go about it but uh, we're going to be stuck with it. So uh, in the meantime here, I'm just trying to detail this out and do something with it. Uh, on the whole, I would say this building was not the most successful. Uh, I was not a huge, huge fan of it. It does it does accomplish the goal of I use different pieces than I have really used on other things. Uh, and in the end, the campaign mode really still is just practice, is what I would say, for an eventual uh, solo type park um, using mods and things like that. So um, that's that's the one benefit, but at the same time, it it doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot for me as far as the structure goes. Um, we are going to change the roof here in the end, get rid of the spire, so uh, the building ends up being kind of squat, but we're going to try and throw in some details there with these pillar pieces and then uh, just decorate it up on the sides. So now we'll place the last ride, uh, which is the uh, orbiter on this side. And we're going to bring that canopy across that we had initially put on the Trayvant ride. And uh, once we build it here, we'll demolish it on the other side. This might be a little bit tall, perhaps a little bit taller than it needs to be, but um, we'll, we'll keep the space. Uh, it is interesting, you rarely, you rarely see flat rides covered in this nature in real life. Uh, but the um, kind of gameplay mechanic requiring uh, you to do that just from a guest standpoint uh, really kind of forces you to do those covers, which is not a bad thing, but it's just uh, a little bit unique compared to um, some other options. And then we're going to build a restaurant on this side, kind of anchoring the uh, back half of the park, we should say, because you really don't have a lot of architecture over there. We've got our ride station, and then we have our toilet building, which isn't doing a whole heck of a lot. Um, so we're struggling again with those connection points, but I did get a little depot here and uh, a couple of uh, burger and fry type places as we build this up. I was thinking about carrying through the uh, architecture from the front, but we had our wooden coaster, had the water tower, so I figured why not go a little more rustic, so we're going to copy over that um, would look and uh, run that through the whole thing using the overlay for the um, the window that we can kind of inset into the big kind of gap window. 
So we're calling this the outpost, and I thought let's uh, use the text because we have it. It's one of the expansion pack pieces, but we still we're not going to shy away from those. So trying all the different fonts just to see what we've got, and then just trimming the whole thing out. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend trimming everything uh, all the time, but in this game it's definitely somewhat encouraged as far as just the overall look of the space goes, just from a cleanliness standpoint of cleanliness of architecture, I suppose. We did extend those uh, that pier, added in more seating, uh, gave that some different options there, and then we're just trying to trim out some different stuff here, adding in uh, some nice seating and uh, the post and rope fencing that we're carrying around the whole space. And then I thought, you know, one more building over here with uh, some drinks and some ice cream. I think at this point I'd unlock the ice cream shop and um, might have been the, the like iced uh, like popsicle stand. So I thought I'd build one more pavilion type building here, almost like a uh, little cart. It ends up being a little more substantial, again, needing that space behind for the access, which we'll see we put outside the, the building itself. But it works, and uh, it feeds all three of those locations, and the guests don't really see it, and it covers things pretty well. So you can kind of see, looking at our decoration rating, that we're doing pretty well. And there aren't too many spots that are, are struggling for uh, that, and really we can just place down some landscaping in some of those. I thought I'd add another little seating area here where you can sit and watch the coaster. I thought about raising it up, but it didn't really seem like it was going to do a whole heck of a lot. Um, but then we'll place this balloon stall here, and uh, I think this is really about it. I think this is the last one that we wanted to, to place. I saw there was a steam achievement for popping balloons, so I thought, why not? I'll uh, try that here. So we we did it. Uh, another little copy of what we did up front. And uh, we'll make that building there. And really, at that point, we kind of wrap up the overall uh, design of the space. And uh, with our scenario goals beaten, it's really just sprucing it up and getting it to a point where we're happy with and then calling it a day. So here we are with the overall look, so not too too much as far as built goes. Here's that uh, balloon stall here as we pop some of those balloons and get that achievement. Uh, we have the wooden coaster, we have the junior coaster, and then some other flat rides around. Um, decent architecture as well, but that's all for now. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.